Why choose this as our goal? Welcome back to Game Change. In today's video, we're going to take a look at one of my and most other people's favorite game and see what features we can take from it and bring into Skyrim Special Edition. And of course, by the title of this video, you already know I'm talking about The Witcher 3. Now, amidst the release of the recent Netflix series, I went back and replayed The Wild Hunt, along with 94,000 other people, and I was instantly reminded why I love that game. Not only was the combat fun, and if played on Death March, actually quite challenging at times, but tonally, the world just fit right with the characters and creatures roaming its swamps, cities and mountain peaks. The add-ons were some of the best DLC content I've experienced for a single player game, and the story really made you attached to the characters and their goals within that world. And while Skyrim is, and will always remain, my favourite game of all time, there's no doubting that there's a few pointers that BGS could take from the Witcher series that would lend nicely to future Elder Scrolls titles. So let's jump straight into the visual mods for this episode. As far as EMBs goes, I wanted to use something bright and colourful for this video that mimics the hues you would see in somewhere like Toussaint. The closest I got while still sticking to the higher end of graphical EMBs was Sevenance's Ice Vogel version 2 EMB, which aims to do exactly that. This EMB is one that I've always seen floating around but never given it a real shot until now, and boy have I been missing out. As far as special edition EMBs goes, this preset is one of the best I've seen to date. The colours, tones and depths of field all work hand in hand to completely redesign the look of Skyrim into a beautiful high fantasy land like that of The Witcher. Something that always stood out to me playing the Wild Hunt was the sunsets. The pink and orange hues bursting from the treetops as you headed back over the bridge to Crow's Perch always weirdly reminded me of my childhood growing up in England for some weird reason. And I got a similar feeling using Guy's Vogel. This EMB is stated by the mod author to be specifically designed for use with enhanced lights and FX and Dolomite weathers. So that's exactly what I'll be using for this video. And as far as flora goes, it's usually a switch up for me between using Vados Brom and Verdant to overhaul my grasses, but for this video I've reverted back to Verdant as it offers a more thick windswept look that in my opinion suits the Witcher tone more. Together with the texture packs I've chosen for this video, which will all be listed in the description below, we now have a base look for Skyrim that's a little more colourful like the Witcher games, and with graphics that are more suited to a 2020 look. I think one of the things about Ice Vogel which stands out to me the most is the lens. EMBs tend to use a variety of different techniques to make the game look as good as they can, given Skyrim's limitations, and usually a bunch of lens effects seems overkill and takes you out of the game at times. But with Ice Vogel, Sevenant strikes the perfect balance, in my opinion, of amazing lens effects in scenarios that make sense. Now, there's quite a few mods we need to get through in this video, so I've split them up into categories and we're going to go through each category one by one. But first, we need a model to help show off some of these mods. And while Geralt would be the obvious choice, there's a reason a little later in the video why it can't be him. So I've brought back an old friend that if you watch my Dark Souls Randomizer series, you might be familiar with. Yes, I have built Fat Thor in Skyrim. And thanks to his abnormally shaped body, Fat Thor will be our model for our next category of Witcher armor and weapon mods. Our first mod is the Witcher 3 armor by Alba8909 and converted to SSE by Banderga. This mod adds a numerous amount of Witcher-themed armors to the game such as Lambert's gear, the Viper School gear, the Feline set, the New Moon gear from Hearts of Stone, the classic Wolven armor, and the fabled Manticore set from Blood and Wine. And it's also possible with console commands to get, um, yeah. Fuck. Next up is both Eridan's armour and the Karanthir armour sets, again ported to SSE by Banderga and originally created by Wapesource and Talius45. Both these mods add a set of armour to the game designed to mimic the cold steel worn by both Eridan and Karanthir of the Wild Hunt. Eridan's set even comes with custom swords in both one-handed and two-handed variants. Next on the female side of things, I've chosen two mods for this video, although there are about 100 variants of different versions of the female Witcher armours on the Nexus. First up is Ciri's Outfit by Oristis, which adds Ciri's famous armour to the game with an optional DLC fur variant. And lastly is the Apache Divine's Elegant Store, which adds a whole bunch of clothing and armours to the game, 
some of which include the Witcher sets like Siana's outfit and Avalak's robes, which can all be found and bought at the Divine Elegance shop located in the Reach. You can also use the Divine Elegance integration patch to add these sets to the NPC level list so that characters other than just the player can make use of the Witcher themed clothing items. Finally, just as a cherry on top, I've also included the Witcher 3 weaponry mod, again by Oristis, which adds a total of 24 unique swords from the Witcher 3 into Skyrim. Now that we have some weapons and armors to kill some monsters, how about we add some monsters to actually kill? If you watched my last video turning Skyrim into oblivion then you'll be familiar with our next creator with the mod Mahail Monsters. Each one of those creatures comes as a separate download so I've specifically picked out the Witcher related creatures for this video and they come as follows. Zarts to add the Witcher's chorts to the game. Basilisks. Water hags. Foglings. Vampire Beast to add new vampire variants like the Katakan, Garcane, and the Ekamara. Leshens and Neckers along with the Old Gods of the Hunt to add more powerful ancient Leshens lurking the forests. Necrophages, Rotten Maidens, Arakas, Giant Centipedes, Hymns, and finally Cyclopes to add the Cyclopses to the mountains. With all these creature mods combined, you'll have no shortages of monsters to kill across Skyrim. Also, something really nice which comes with these mods is that all the monsters drop their own loot, trophies and ingredients that all have their own properties, so there's always an incentive to stick out the fights at the end. But what good is these Witcher weapons and Witcher monsters when fighting them still comes down to mashing LT and RT? Well, our next set of mods aim to fix that. Firstly, The Witcher is a third person game, so all these mods are designed to be used in third person. I'm using an enhanced third person camera by Keygars, which allows you to manually reposition the third person camera in and out of combat. Then I've also gone with a newer mod to SSE called Combat Gameplay Overhaul by DServant. This mod adds several features and fixes to combat and movement. It allows for responsive dodge rolls, procedural leaning, grip changing and a whole bunch of new animations and even mid-air combat. Now some of the features in this mod like the mid-air combat and the leaning clearly are not gameplay systems included in the Witcher series either, but when I saw gameplay of this mod I just had to include it in this list. And with some HUD mods thrown in like Sky HUD, customizable UI replacer and display enemy level, we now have a gameplay setup that is a little closer to the Witcher 3.
Oh, and if you're wondering what that meditation mod I was using in that clip is called, it's Greybeard Meditation. There is a more Witcher focused mod called Witcher Style Meditate Waiting, but again it requires finesse, which is directly incompatible with combat gameplay overhaul. But Greybeard Meditation works as a nice lightweight version of that mod anyway, so we don't miss out completely on that feature. Next we're going to blast through the honourable mentions, or else this video is going to be way too long. So here goes. Silence prisoners, to add deuterium-esque shackles to prisoners which blocks magic use while in jail. Frozen electrocuted combustion, to add visual effects to the player and NPCs that are killed by dragons, fire, frost, fear, lightning, drain, poison, sun damage and soul traps. Immersive laundry, to give Skyrim's cities some decorative clotheslines and other washing related items for a touch of realism. A loot from The Witcher 3, to replace the vanilla loot with one found in The Witcher games. Rally's Witcher loot to replace the loot from the Witcher 3 loot with a loot with higher textures. Witcher Decor to retexture Skyrim's decorative braziers with Witcher themed variants. Tavern games to add some small mini games to taverns and inns. Missives to add notice boards to each major hold, which contain both contracts, quests, and general town riffraff. Road signs to add fast travel points to road signs as found in The Witcher, and point the way to add more of them along the roads. Toxicity to add limits to potion use by adding a toxicity system to the game along with potion overdose and hallucinations. Alternate conversation camera to add the Witcher star dialogue camera to your game. And finally, honed metal to allow you to commission weapons and armors to be crafted by blacksmiths across Skyrim in a Witcher 3 esque style. <sighs> How many mods deep are we already? 140? Okay, just a few more to go. Okay, so the next two mods are optional for this list. Well, they're all optional, but these two are extra optional. And I say they're optional because I would never dare deface Fat Thor with the mods Witcher Race and Witcher Three Eyes. Yeah, no thanks. So we have Witcher enemies, Witcher-ish combat, Witcher visuals, but we're yet to introduce any Witcher characters to Tamriel. Is it immersive? No. But we're literally turning Skyrim into the Witcher, so immersion went out the door a long time ago. Introducing Geralt of Rivia. Yennefer of Vengerberg, Cyrilla Fiona Ellen Rhiannon, Ceres on Crate, and finally Triss. Never mind, that one has been removed from the Nexus. Each one of these followers include custom voice files from The Witcher 3, which fit surprisingly well into Skyrim. Each adorns their own custom armors, and each will follow you without question for whatever unimmersive reason. Probably because Fat Thor is the ultimate godly specimen, but that's just a theory. A game theory. And now you know why I didn't try to remake Geralt at the start of the video. I ain't making no beta of Blaviken. I make alphas of Asgard babies. Okay, so let's move on to the final two mods for this video. The first is really just a bow on top of the other mods in this video. And that comes in the form of music, specifically Witcher music, with either of the two mods Witcher 3 Music Overhaul or Cactus's Witcher Music Overhaul, which both work in a similar way to add the Witcher soundtrack to the game. I choose to use Cactus's mod, as the music in both exploration and combat are regional, meaning you'll only ever hear certain tracks in certain holds of Skyrim, which is my personal preference, but you're free to make your own decisions. There's also about a kajillion other Witcher music mods on the Nexus, which range from adding to the vanilla soundtrack and completely replacing it, so if either of these mods don't fit your fancy, then I'm sure you'll find one that works for you. Music is always one of those features that makes or breaks a game. And in our case, it really does meld together all the mods used in this video by bringing you right back into the Witcher universe with its iconic soundtrack. And hold in there because we've still got one last mod to finalise today's video. And it comes in the form of a Witcher inspired player home by the name of Dithwen. I think I'm saying that right. Dithwen. Which is also the name of one of the Silver Swords in the Witcher games, I believe. This mod adds a very Witcher themed home in the capital of Skyrim, which comes with its own Kira Met style sauna, custom Gwent card textures. Novigrad guards, a treasure room with weapon displays, and even a lovely painting of Geralt and Yen hanging just above your bed. You know, if you're into that. These days, player homes have to be unique to stand out from the thousands of files on the Nexus, and Dithwen is a player home that the words stands out can definitely be used to describe. It's the perfect place to come back after a long day of killing monsters and completing contracts, and combined with the other 145 mods in today's video, gives you the most Witcher-like experience you can find in Special Edition. And that's going to do it for today's video. 
If you enjoyed this video, then leave a like and comment below your ideas for future Game Change episodes. I see all your comments, so don't worry people requesting video ideas, I will get to them. Slowly, but I will get to them. Also, let's continue to build this list, so if there's any mods you know of that would have fit well in this video, then let me know in the comments. But otherwise, thanks for watching! We're coming up on 1.5k, so that's pretty sicko mode. So if you want to help the cause, then subscribe, and I'll see you next week for another Game Change episode. Adios, bitches!